There's nothing more amazing looking than having a large group of swimming, schooling fish in perfect synchronization, right? But for me, I feel like I still need that special accent color, that statement piece that stands out from the rest of the fish. That's why I want to talk about centerpiece fish. They're bigger, more colorful, more personality, and actually have a name compared to the rest of the crowd. Hi, my name is Irene with Girl Talks Fish, and today I'm going to be reviewing my past five centerpiece fish for nanotakes, which I'm going to define as five to 20 gallons in size. So the first centerpiece fish I ever got was a German blue ram called Dominic. And if you have ever seen a German blue ram before, you know why I couldn't resist getting one for my community tank. They have almost every color of the rainbow, I feel like, when they're in breeding dress. They've got that yellow face, the red eye, the vertical stripe through the red eye that's black, more black oblong shapes on their body covered in blue spangles. I mean, it's kind of hard to describe, but they look like this amazing saltwater fish that you can keep in freshwater. And they only get to about mm, two and a half inches in size. In terms of personality, they are kind of peaceful, kind of semi-aggressive, especially if you have a breeding pair that's trying to defend its territory. But for me, I only had the one male, Dominic, and he got along just fine with the school of Corydoras, the school of Neon Tetras, but when I tried to keep another singleton, a single fish with him, a honey garami, he did not like him. He had a special target on that poor fish's head and every time the honey garami would try to swim out he would basically attack it prevent it from eating i mean that's why honey garamis i think like get that that reputation for being shy because that poor thing never came out of hiding so in terms of pass or fail i would give german bull rams a pass as long as you keep them with other tank mates that are a schooling fish where you have a large group of them so you can't really target a specific individual and then also make sure you keep them in 84 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. They really like that water hot, hot, hot to do well. And at the time I was doing my research, I looked on the internet and a lot of these care guys said that, oh, you can keep them as low as 78 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And that is not true. Now for my second community tank, I really wanted to keep a Garami as my centerpiece fish. I just like that look of their flat body with the oblong shake, shape pointed kind of nose and the special modified ventral fins that look like feelers. Really cool. And so a dwarf grommy only gets to two and a half to three inches long. The most common varieties you'll see sold at pet stores include, I guess the regular type has that powder neon blue with the vertical red stripes. The powder blue dwarf gourami is almost solid blue without a lot of red markings. And then the flame dwarf gourami is, wow, that bright red orange body with the blue fins. And that's the type I got. I named him Peyton Manning because of that orange and blue color. And I love the Denver Broncos. And personality wise, he was absolutely semi-aggressive. I'm not sure why pet stores call Dwarf Garamis community fish, because they're not. I mean, okay, to be fair, he did get along okay with the green neon tetras, but he absolutely hated my albino quarry doors. And I'm not sure why, because Dwarf Garamis, they're supposed to swim mostly on the upper half versus the quarry doors, they're down below. They're not the same shape, they're not the same color, but he just, had it out for them. He would chase them so much that they would be all herded toward the far corners of the tank and he wouldn't let them eat. He wouldn't let them swim out in the open. And I was like, I'm sorry, dude. I like corridors a lot better than you. So you are out of here. I tried putting him in timeout, giving him a little break, but he would just nonstop try to attack them through the net. So when it comes to pass or fail, I'm definitely gonna have to fail them, at least the males. They can be real bullies. Females are a little more peaceful, but they're just not as colorful and pretty to be a centerpiece fish at least. However, Aquarium Co-op does recommend the female powder blue dwarf garami just because they're just as brightly colored as the males, but they don't have the attitude problems. So try and give them a shot. After that whole fiasco with the dwarf garami, I still wanted a garami as my centerpiece fish, so I went with honey garamis. And there are a little bit smaller, around two inches long, and then they come in several color varieties, the wild type, the yellow gold type, and then kind of a reddish orange version. Although the females in general tend to be a little more faded in color, and they sometimes have a horizontal stripe on them. 
personality. They are a lot more peaceful. They can be a little shy when faced with other more aggressive creatures like the German Blue Ram. However, my male Hanigurami was called Pikachu, and he absolutely got along fine with the other albino corridors, as well as the green neon tetras. I never saw him hiding because all the other fish were pretty peaceful. He was pretty much front and center all the time, did his own thing, looked fantastic. Later on, I thought, hey, it might be kind of cool to breed him. So I ended up getting two more females. And I noticed when the females were in the quarantine tank, the one of them would absolutely bully the other one, especially during meal time. So they're not all peaceful, like an auto sinkless or something. And then eventually when I added the two females with the male, I didn't really ever see them school or shoal together. They kind of all swam around the tank and did their own thing. So I don't think you necessarily have to get a big group of them in order for them to be happy. My rating for them is an absolute pass. They are, I just love their gentleness, that bright yellow color. They're easy to feed, easy to breed, which I have a whole video about over here. I mean, really for me, they are the gold standard, ideal centerpiece fish when it comes to a nano size tank. My third community tank you guys may have heard of was the Shy Guys Jungle Tank, where I wanted to do a heavily planted aquarium with all mostly shy fish. And I picked the peacock gudgeon because I thought they were shy. <laughs> like when I saw the first one I'd ever seen in a fish store, he was kind of hiding behind a piece of wood the whole time. So I didn't realize that they're not actually shy, but Oh well. So Voltron the Peacock Gudgeon gets to about two inches long and is another rainbow kind of looking fish. Mine was pink with some red vertical stripes and yellow tipped fins and a very solid black dot at the base of his tail. Personality wise, I've heard some people say they're semi-aggressive where the males can get pretty territorial with each other. They can really defend their space during breeding season. I didn't really have that issue as much. I only had one and he was fine with the coolie loaches, with the celestial pearl daniels. Sometimes I saw him get a little annoyed at some of the live bears or stare somebody down during meal time, but that was pretty much it. Otherwise he was a good citizen of the, the community tank. My problem with him as a centerpiece fish wasn't necessarily the personality, but more the appearance. So for example, he is two inches long, just like the honey grummy, but the honey grummy has a wider profile. So he kind of takes up more space, commands more space in the community tank versus the peacock gungeon has a very slender profile. It's kind of smaller looking. And then the rainbow colors I mentioned previously, they were really muted and seemed to almost blend in more with the tank and didn't stand out as much. Honestly, I feel like my Dalmatian mollies that were black and white were more high contrast and eye-catching compared to my peacock gudgeon. Pass or fail? Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to give the coolie loach a fail because personality-wise, he was fine. He got along with the coolie loaches, with the CPDs, but impact-wise, visually, he didn't really stand out, didn't really make much of an impact. For my fourth community tank, it's actually this one. And I want to talk about betta fish as centerpiece fish. You remember I got Sonic, he's a mustard gas betta, and he is currently not here. So let's talk about that. Betta splendens can get to about three inches, probably including the tail. They come in all sorts of crazy colors, patterns, tail shapes, anything you want, they probably have it. Their personality would be considered more on the semi-aggressive side, but with the right tank mates and the right personality, they can work, which I have a whole video about over here if you want some ideas. Now, the first betta I kept in a community tank was Darth Vader, that crown tail that was blue and red. He was such a sweetie, he got along with everyone. He did absolutely great. Soundwave was the second betta in a community tank, and once I gave him enough space and he was kind of older and mellower with age, he did fine as well. He didn't really bother anyone. Maybe guarded the food sometimes, but that's about it. However, Sonic, the mustard gas betta I just got, he is young and he thinks he can take down those super fast platies and mollies, which he can't. So the live bears, they didn't care about being chased by the betta. They're very derpy. They weren't stressed at all. But Sonic, he was just super avid about defending his territory. He would just nonstop go after the platies with that giant sail-like tail of his, and eventually ended up developing some tears that became fin rot. 
because he wouldn't stop chasing them. So that is why he is in his own bachelor pad right now. So my recommendation for bettas when it comes to being a centerpiece fish would be pass with some caveats. You gotta have the right tank mates and the right personality for your betta. Again, it worked uh, for two out of three of my betta fish. So as long as you have a large enough tank with plenty of cover, things to block line of sight, I think it's worth a shot. So my question for you is, should I try to get another centerpiece fish for this 20 gallon community tank? And if so, what? It would have to get along with the dwarf red coral platys as well as not be red or orange in color so that it wouldn't blend in with everybody else. Also, I want to answer a random related comment of the week, which is how hardy are honey grommies by Joe. And I would say very hardy. They're a great beginner fish. That's why you see them in Petsco, Petco, PetSmarts, that kind of thing. I've never had any issues with them getting sick. The only thing I will say is if you are going to breed them, the fry tend to be have a really high mortality rate naturally. So I think that's why they make hundreds and hundreds of eggs though when they breed, so it shouldn't be a problem. Take time to enjoy your aquariums and I'll see you in the next video.